I have made several videos about wireless charging that stretches from unboxing and demos to tests and reviews. But after my latest videos showcasing my do-it-yourself charging nightstand I still got a lot of questions. I thought I'll try to answer the most common ones. First of all, how does this magic thingy work? Well, what I hid inside the table was a QI charger from Nokia. QI is the type of standard in wireless charging, and it is the same as for instance the Nexus 4 and the Nokia Luna uses. Wireless charging isn't totally new. My first inductive charger was this for my computer mouse. And many of you probably already have a wireless charger, since it's also used to charge electric toothbrushes. What hides inside the charger and the phone is a coil, and when current passes through the transmitter coil it creates a magnetic field. The magnetic field then creates a voltage in the receiving coil, which charges the phone. The phone doesn't have to line up perfectly, but it needs to be within the magnetic field. The by far most common question I got was why didn't I use a router or some sort of power tool? I've answered it so many times that I'm gonna let you guess. The alternatives are that I'm Amish, because routers are illegal in my country, or it was because I didn't have one and even if I did I still would have done it by hand to make it as simple as possible so that it wouldn't be intimidating to anybody and that those who have power tools lying around probably would figure that out for themselves. Many of you wondered why I didn't just tape the thing under the table. Well, apart from the obvious ugliness and that I then would have had to carve in the drawer instead to be able to open it, the table is just too thick. Which leads us to another question, what materials can it pass through? I have made a video where I test a couple of different things, but the short story is from a few millimeters to a few centimeters, depending on the density, and no metals. And I mean no metals, it didn't even pass through the wall of a soda can. So, does it take that much longer to charge? I don't really know and I don't really care. I put it to charge when I go to sleep and I wake up with a full battery like I've done ever since my first cell phone some 15 years ago. So if it lays next to me while I'm asleep, will it give me radioactive superpowers or just cancer? First let me say that I am no physicist, but the way I understand it is that magnetism follows the inverse square law. What that means is that the field's strength decreases with a fourth for every unit of length. So let's for example say that the magnetic field's strength one decimeter from the charger is 10. It is already way too weak to be able to charge a phone. And at 2 decimeters the strength has decreased by a fourth to 2.5. And at 3 decimeter it's only a 9 left. I think you see where this is going. By the time it reaches my head at roughly 10 decimeters, I seriously doubt that there's enough to turn me into radioactive man. Last but not least, what is the point of having it? Why not just use a regular cable? The thing is that if you don't have one, I can't really explain it. For me, it's like using a remote instead of walking up to the TV, or surfing on a tablet instead of a computer. But most of all, it just looks really good. If you have any more questions like why I didn't use a router or how does that wireless charger thingy really works, I'd be glad to answer them in the comment section. And check out my other videos on the subject as well. Oh, I forgot. This is not a cat. It's a bulldog.